Well, hunger looms large in many communities throughout the United States, and with all that's going on right now, it's not hard to see how quickly food insecurity can become an issue, leaving many to wonder where their next meal will come from. But there are those who want to help ease that concern. Chef Simon Majumdar joins us to share how folks can help. Hi, so how, how big of an issue is this for us, really? Well, this is a huge issue. Even before the pandemic, this was a big issue. We had 35 million people in America knowing, not knowing if they were going to have food any night, 10 million of those children. So that was really tough. But during the pandemic, things have got worse and tougher for people, you know, people losing their jobs, people being displaced or maybe having COVID themselves. And I hope they're all recovering. And also with the natural disasters, you know, with with hurricanes and with floods and with here in California with wildfires, people are just being displaced. So they're further away from food. They're more in food insecurity. Well, there are some that have the ability to help right now, and how can they go about doing that? Well, it's a great question because a lot of times people want to go out and they want to go to the farmer's market or buy fresh produce and take that to people, which is great. But we don't know if some people are going to have refrigeration, if they have freezers. And so giving people fresh food is often a little tricky unless you really know them. So for me, the key is to think about what you would want if you were in that circumstance. And so if I was in that circumstance, I'd want dried food, things like oats, things like dried fruits that are going to give nutrition and deliciousness. Things like cans are wonderful. We often look down on cans, but they're packed at the right time when they're full of protein. So beans, lentils, pulses, those work really, really well. And the other thing, I, I'm British. If I'm too far away from my morning milk and my cup of tea in the morning, then the world's not going to be good. So things like milk that's packaged so it doesn't need refrigeration. So just think about what you would need in that circumstance. And I think that's a great place to start. Wonderful advice there. And if people want to make an even bigger impact, is there a way they can do that? Absolutely. So I'm working particularly with convoyofhope.org, which is a Convoy of Hope is a wonderful organization. They fed over 100 million meals to people in the United States during the pandemic. I want them to feed 100 million more if they can. You know, I hope they don't need to, but I want to make sure they're ready and set for it. So go to convoyofhope.org. You'll be able to see that. And if you go to convoyofhope.org slash Simon, which is my name, you'll see some recipes that I've done. I set myself a kind of little challenge uh, to see if I could create really nutritious and delicious meals just using dried food, just using canned food. And I was really pleased with what I was able to do. And so again, food can be nutritious, it must be, but it can be delicious as well, even if you're struggling. Chef, do you have a couple of quick recipes for folks that they can um, try to make during this time? Absolutely. So if you go on convoyofhope.org slash Simon, you'll see them. But this one particularly where I took cans of chicken and corn and turned them into these chili corn cakes with chickpeas and spinach and tomatoes underneath. That's going to give you full of deliciousness, full of nutrition. And here I have a rice pilaf that's got dried fruits and nuts, kind of that North African flavor, a little cumin in there. And make sure you give people some spices as well so they can really oomph up their food and make it delicious. Thank you, Chef. Well, we have several stories still ahead on the power of two. 